Hello, everyone. Welcome to Leading Up. I'm Dr. Michelle Rosen. Super glad to have you here. We're here to talk about emotional intelligence in today's market and figure out three things that great leaders do that make them emotionally intelligent as leaders. Let's find out what those are. Let's talk about emotional intelligence in leadership. This is Leading Up. Let's talk about emotional intelligence. What does emotional intelligence actually mean? So emotional intelligence means the ability to understand your own emotions and also to understand the emotions of people around you. So let's start from the first part, understanding your own emotions. It's extremely important for leaders to live on a very high level of awareness. That means that you are very aware of your own biases. You are very aware of how to control your own feelings rather than being controlled by them. And the more you think strategically and the more aware you are of how you feel in any given situation and what is the right thing to do rather than being led by your emotions, the more effective you are as a leader, part one. The part two of this all is becoming very aware and mindful of the emotions of people around you. And one of the problems with that is that it's not like other people come to you and they say, hey, you know, I feel this way or that way, or I'm burned out or I'm going through something personal. People don't share that information with you. And so what happens to leaders a lot of times is that leaders just assume a lot of things about other people people. And when you assume things about other people, you make strategic decisions as a result. What we're going to do is this, Shelby. You're my supervisor. Mm -hmm. I work for you, okay. right? Okay. Makes me uncomfortable already. I'm already like antsy. Okay. So um, this is Monday morning. Shelby's meeting me in the hallway. And I was supposed to submit this really big project to you by Sunday night. And do you think I handed it in? Didn't hear you? Not at all, nothing, nothing. She comes, her and inbox is empty, and I'm also a little late, so let's say it's not nine o'clock, it's like 9.20, and here I am, I'm coming into the office, and up, I just saw Shelby, so my morning just got a little bit more challenging. What do you wanna tell me? Just talk to me, give it, give it, Shelby. <laughs> where, where's um, that deliverable I asked for? Oh. <laughs> now, pause for a minute. Every time I do this, I get nervous <laughs> because I really feel on the hot seat, right? So you're meeting me. I'm embarrassed enough already. You're in the hallway with us. So the same way that you're seeing our interaction, I'm fearing that a lot of my peers are going to pass by and they're going to see me and they will hear some of the conversation and how I'm getting grilled. And I see Shelby's expression. Look at her. Is she going to grill me? <laughs> Definitely. I'm, I'm done. <laughs> And so I'm going to say, um, yeah, Shelby, you know, um, I uh, was going to give it to you. Definitely was going to give it to you. I'm almost done. Give me like a few more hours. You should see her expressions. It's precious. <laughs> She's mad. And I will definitely give it to you. Okay? Now, do you know in cartoons when there are bubbles above characters' heads? Okay, so Shelby, turn around. This is the bubble above Shelby's head. Shelby is thinking... She never respected me. That is the issue. Ever since I got that position, which she thought she deserves, huh, right? She never respected me and she doesn't accept my authority. So you know what the problem with Michelle is? She's gonna do anything and everything to fail me. She just can't wait to see me fail. And so if you think that in your mind, Shelby, in your little bubble that I don't know what you're thinking, how are you going to treat me? What are you gonna do? I'm going to be rude. You're going to be rude. And are you going to support me in any way? No. No. And not be understanding. Not be understanding. I may have a nasty email coming my way, a little bit of passive aggressive there or something, right? Right. We're on the same page, right? Here's the bubble above my head. Oh my God. 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 <laughs> I'm having such a hard time anyway. I'm having so many problems at home. The fact that I'm standing here in one piece to even show up to work and deal with all these difficult people <laughs> at my workplace, right? That's fine. 
is a miracle. I'm a hero. I don't know how I put up with all of this. And you know what? Bubble, bubble, bubble. It's not that I don't get my work done. I'm doing work of like three other people that are not getting their work done and it's all falling on me. But none of it comes up in our communications. So I don't know what's in Shelby's bubble, but she takes decisions as far as our interaction based on a made up reality. I want you to understand the full power of what I'm telling you. Shelby made up a reality in her mind that I hate her and I want her to fail. And she's gonna take decisions based on that. I made up a reality in my mind where I'm basically a hero. I walked in here with a cape. I deserve all the respect in the world, which I'm not getting. So I'm a hero and a victim. That's a good one, right? And so we're never going to be able to get along. You need to be very mindful as a leader to always communicate with your team. Don't assume things, ask questions. Once you do that, you will be able to utilize your people skills in order to connect with your team better, lead them better, motivate them better, and get that team to outstanding results, which is your job and your role as a leader. So here's the first thing that emotionally intelligent leaders do that get them to outstanding results. Here it is. They admit when they are wrong. And it may sound simple to you, but this is super powerful because too many times I work with teams and leaders where the leader messes up on something and they're kind of afraid that if they're going to admit their mistake, it will diminish their authority as a leader, where in fact, if you made a mistake, if you messed up, which is totally human, and you admit your mistake at that moment, you're creating a culture of openness. You're creating a culture of vulnerability. You're creating a culture of communication. And you're also creating a culture where people feel comfortable to do things. There are companies where people are afraid to do because they don't want to be judged for messing up. If you lead by example, and when you mess up, you admit to your mistake, you're giving an outstanding example for your team. It's all right, I apologize. You're really sorry. I'm really, really sorry. I apologize unreservedly. You take it back. I do. I offer a complete and utter retraction. The imputation was totally without basis in fact and was in no way fair comment and was motivated purely by malice. And I deeply regret any distress that my comments may have caused you or your family. And I hereby undertake not to repeat any such slander at any time in the future. Okay. We are here to find out what it is that emotionally intelligent leaders do that get them and their teams to outstanding results. Here is number two. Number two is emotionally intelligent leaders do not solve problems for their team members. And this is very important. This is also important for you in your personal life. When someone comes to you with a problem and you solve their problem for them, here's what you're actually communicating to them. You tell them non-verbally, right? You tell them, listen, you're not so capable. So let me tell you what to do. Here is what you need to do. And let's say you give them the solution. So at that moment, on the short term, you solve the problem. But on the long term, you create a group of people that feel very incompetent and that come to you for everything. So the next time someone comes to you with a problem, and it may be your kid or your team member, it doesn't matter, anyone around you, before you jump to solve their problem, which communicates to them that they are probably less capable than you, in solving it, do this, just listen. All you need to do is just listen. Because a lot of times when the other person communicates a problem to you, they are speaking it out to themselves. And if you empower them to solve their own problem and bite your tongue, even if you know what exactly needs to be done, empower them and just listen, they will find a way. And on the long run, you will have a group of people, a team of people who are capable of solving their own problems and they don't run to you for everything. I know it's hard. I know it's hard to just listen. It's a skill that is almost lost in today's world to just not say anything and just be. But the next time 
someone comes to you with a problem, I want you to try it and see how quickly they figure it out, they find a way. Three things that emotionally intelligent leaders do. Here is number three. Emotionally intelligent leaders do not let their emotions run the show. And that is very important because as a leader, your role means that you need to be proactive rather than reactive. That means that if a problem happens and you react to it emotionally, you're not really in control of the situation and you didn't really have the time to sit back, strategize, reflect, and think what is the right thing to do. You're just responding at the moment. But if you're an emotionally intelligent leader and something happens even if your blood boils, even if you feel that your cheeks are getting red and oh, yes, somebody's just about to get it, you stop and you think, and you reflect, and you make the time to think what is the right thing to do. And when you do that, you will react very differently than how you would have reacted in the first place, right on the spot when you were reactive rather than proactive. We have in our mind two areas of the brain that are really important, and I'm not gonna go over the structure of the brain, so don't worry. <laughs> But it's super simple. We have the front of the brain, which is the prefrontal cortex. This is where we are very smart and we take strategic decisions and we are just very sophisticated beings. But unfortunately, we also have in the back, in the limbic system, we also have the amygdala that is in charge of impulsive behavior. And every time you're really mad at someone, or there's any kind of a heated situation, what happens is what we call amygdala hijack, which means that you are going to write emails that you really should not be writing. You know, the kinds that you put in your drafts folder and read later and say, oh, oh my God, delete, 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 change. <laughs> Those kind of, you're gonna send a text that you shouldn't send. You're gonna make a face at someone. You're gonna say something that you shouldn't. Amygdala hijack, you are not in control. You got a drunk driver in the front seat. Okay, you know what it's like? It's like if you put a hot, a hot pot on the stove and you go touch it with your bare hands, what's gonna happen to you? You burn, right? You go to the same pot 20 minutes later, is it hot? Will you get burned? No, stove's off, everything's good. You wait 20 minutes for every heated situation where you even suspect that there may be a little bit of an amygdala hijack. That means that your cheeks are flamed, your ears are fuming. <laughs> you're feeling really upset by a certain situation with someone else, you will always want to operate out of the prefrontal cortex. Therefore, you wait at least 20 minutes to let yourself cool down, just like the pot on the stove. Unless you want to get burned. I mean, it's an option. You can do that. It's a free country, but you really don't want to. So we call that the 20 minute rule. So right here at Dear Dr. Michelle, I got some great questions about EQ in leadership, and I want to share three with you. Here's the first one. Hi, Dr. Michelle. I'm a leader in IT and really struggle with the sensitivity of Gen Z. If I say anything, their eyes fill with tears. What should I or should I not say or should I just not say anything? Well, I'm super glad you asked me that question because this is a very important one. Part of EQ in leadership is to also diversify your approach to different people. So if you have some people in your team that because of the generational gap or any other issue are more sensitive or respond more to praise or respond in a certain way to criticism, you really have to diversify your approach and the way you talk to them. You really can't talk to all people the same way. You have to know the people and approach them in the best possible way that you can to that person. So if there is something in the way you interacted with that Gen Z person that was very hurtful to them, something is not working. Something needs to change in the way you approach them. Maybe something needs to change in your relationship with them. And this is food for thought for you. What can you change on your end in order to improve that interaction rather than judging them for getting hurt? Here's another great question here, dear Dr. Michelle. I really hope to get an answer on this. I feel that I'm so busy as a leader in the pharmaceutical industry that I don't get enough time to check in with my team as often as I should. What can I do to improve this situation? So 
Here's what you need to do. Go to your calendar and block time for checking in with your team. Because what happens a lot of times, especially in industries that are super busy and high tension and, you know, there's just so much to do is that there's just not enough time in the day to get everything done. And then what happens is that you're so busy with your day that even if you decided and you said, yes, I'm going to check in with my team more often, I'm going to interact with them, I'm definitely gonna do it this week. And then the week starts and everything happens and there's no way you can get to it unless you block the time in your calendar. So you treat it like any other task that you have that week and you block a certain time of the day, probably it would be best to make it the same time every day to check in with your team. If you're remote, check in with them remotely. If you're um, local at the office, just walk around, walk around the floor and make sure to just touch base with people in the most informal way so that you can gain another layer of understanding of what is going on and how people are doing. Here's another great question. Hi, Dr. Michelle, we have a problem with building a good culture of feedback. People don't respond well to feedback and take it personally. And it's making it very difficult for me as much as to the other leaders to work this way. On an immediate basis, how can we improve this situation? So this answer is going to be a little bit non-traditional because I know that you're very focused on how to give feedback and you're saying, you know, oh, maybe I should say it this way. Maybe I should say it that way. Is there a good way to start the conversation? How do I plan the conversation? I say, let's not even talk about the conversation. I don't want to talk about the conversation. I want to talk about the relationship because in order for you to give feedback in the best possible way, what you need to do is focus on building a relationship. Nobody wants to hear feedback from someone that they're not connected to. If you appreciate someone, if you respect someone, if you know that someone else has your best interest in mind and they want you to succeed, they're on your team and they have something to say that is not necessarily criticism per se, but it's constructive criticism, constructive feedback. Of course, you're going to listen because that relationship was built up to that point. So what you need to do is go back to the foundation and find out if you have that relationship with your team. And if you don't, before you focus on how to give feedback and how to build a culture of feedback, build a culture of connection, communication, and mutual respect. Today, we talked about emotional intelligence for leaders, three things that great leaders do, emotionally intelligent leaders do that get them to outstanding results. Being emotionally intelligent is a skill that is acquired over time. It comes with experience. It comes with reading. It comes with listening to content that teaches you things every day. Life is a process of learning. Leadership is a process of becoming. Make sure that you consume the knowledge, that you get the skills, that you are up to date on any resource out there that will boost your emotional intelligence as a leader. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and click the notification bell to keep up with all the new videos. Also, click on the link to watch another video.